Well, good morning. If I could uh, go ahead and get your attention this morning, we, we need to take care of just a little bit of church business before we get the, uh, the rest of the guys up here for some announcements. But uh, um, over the last uh, few days, we slash Brother Gerald has uh, found a uh, church van that we need to talk about. And um, uh, we've kind of back and forth messaged all week about a, uh, a church van that is for sale over in Baird. It is a wholesale van. It was actually a church van previously. I've got a call in to the church that that uh, had it first. Haven't heard back from them just yet to make sure that it uh, that it ran well for them and why they might have been getting rid of it and that sort of stuff. It's a 2010 Chevy, one ton, uh, 52,000 miles. is a good deal at 11.5 again taking for granted that we have not driven it yet and just waiting to uh, see what um, what the uh, the church that had it previous has to say about it you know if they just upgraded vans and just got rid of it whatever the situation may be um, so uh, is this something that you would like for me to continue to pursue knowing that it would be somewhere around 15,000 by the time we're kind of all said and done with it. Yay, nay. Yes, no, yes, no. Anybody have anything to say? Yes. Okay, all right. So kind of an open, Miss Judy. 52,000. Yes, yes. And uh, everybody that I've talked to said, uh, I think Brother Clyde and some others that I talked to about this said that uh, this particular model of van, 2010, the engine that's got in it, Brother Gerald also said, probably get another 100, 150,000 miles out of it if, if, you know, if we don't bash heads into the side of the other or, or anything like that. But, uh, but it's a good engine. That's basically... It is. Al it does already have a tow package on it, which is very important because we do haul trailers around as well, uh, camps and, and things like that, eventually mission trips and, and stuff. But uh, um, got a motion just to kind of pursue. Uh, do you think we ought to continue? Just uh, we're getting a lot of head nods. Yes, we'll continue to pursue. Okay, then I, with that, uh, we don't necessarily have to vote on that today. I will just continue to pursue this and see if I can get out and drive it um, and, and – uh, uh, Brother Gerald actually went all the way through it the other day, and and it's uh, the interior is is good. It's it's kind of a vinyl seat, but the uh, flooring in it is not carpet, so that's e much easier to keep clean with a shop vac or something like that, because we know kids are so clean, don't we? We just talked in Sunday school about sarcasm, and here I am being sarcastic right here. I am so convicted already. Please. Help me with that, Lord. 
Um, anyway, so um, we'll pursue this week, see what uh, the situation might be. Hopefully, I'll hear back from that church. If not, I'll give them a call back and, and uh, find out hopefully more about uh, uh, any lasting details about that. Okay, so we're good to go. We're all right with that. Any other questions about it? Any other thoughts about it? Okay, guys, come on up. Let's get some announcements, and we'll officially get our service started this morning. Welcome so much to uh, Broadway Baptist Church this morning. Hopefully you received a bulletin when you came in. If you did and you're here for the very first time, the uh, back side of the bulletin has a little scan code on the bottom. Please fill out the guest card on the scan code. And if you'll email that to us, we'd love to uh, have a record of your attendance with us this morning. Front side scan code gets you right to the website where you're going to find all the details about what's going on here at Broadway. And, and uh, you'll find out more about uh, what we are about to tell you about here during our announcements. It is uh, it's a busy time. February was supposed to not be too busy and March busy, but uh, we missed out on the not busy February and just busy, busy in March. Hey, how many of you have decided that uh, the weather missed rattlesnake roundup this year? The cold weather this weekend, and we had nice weather last weekend. So speaking of that, how much did uh, the youth end up raising for rattlesnake roundup last week? So our total at the end of the, the week was $932. And so we started with $100 and change, and so we raised $832 for camp. And that's, uh, uh, according to my calculations, 3.1 kids to camp. I mean, so that's awesome. The weekend was, was well worth it. All right, and speaking of for a camp uh, fundraiser, uh, we do have our, we are selling tamales. We do have our tamale uh, list back there. Again, I want to thank each and every one of y'all who's participated, who's bought tamales. Uh, we will call tomorrow and get our, get our order in. And then we'll have to plan a trip to San Antonio uh, that following week to pick them up. And so y'all should have them by the first end of, end of March, 1st of April. Sounds good. Tomorrow night starts the next new and prospective member class here at the church. It'll be back in the uh, ladies' classroom. We're going to start at 630, and uh, it's about an hour and a half, three classes this week, tomorrow night, next week, next Tuesday night, and then the following Monday night. We have about six or seven going through the class this time, so going to be great. Looking forward to that. If you're still interested, see me today. If this one doesn't work out, we'll probably have the next new member class in May. And then uh, the, t the time is here, guys, for Ironman. That's going to be this weekend, Friday and Saturday, over in uh, Lake Brownwood. Uh, the cost, again, is $90, and that is due today. Uh, so so make sure that you get the money in if you have not already and that it's not too late to sign up as well If you still want to go uh, do we need to have a meeting after church to negotiate rides here or uh? We can okay. Yeah, if, uh, yeah, we might we're gonna we're gonna meet right over here after church to to make sure that everybody has uh, Rides so that we can all get there because we all carpool uh, Since we're still trying to get a new church man. Uh, I don't think it's gonna make it to Brownwood. So uh, we uh, we need to make sure we figure out rides and uh, and that we get there at Underwoods the the right time. So that's uh, this Friday and Saturday Ironman. Okay, and it's hard to believe that birthday buddies is right around the corner. Uh, but March thirtieth on on Thursday at two forty five. If you've never been part of birthday buddies, it's where we go and we take uh, cupcakes, we take juice, we take them across the street, and we be able to go and uh, give those to kids who have birthdays that month. And so if you are interested in coming. Uh, we'll meet here at 245 that Thursday, March 30th, and then we'll head across the street. And then uh, men's prayer breakfast. The next one will be April uh, the 8th at 8 o'clock. That's uh, Saturday. And then uh, we will have Resurrection Sunday on April the 9th. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to Easter this year. Uh, I do like to call it Resurrection Sunday rather than Easter because as soon as I hear Easter, I just think of a bunny, and I just do not want to think about that. So Resurrection Sunday will be Sunday, April the 9th, and then we will have uh, Lord's Supper that night uh, after, uh, after our, our Resurrection Sunday morning. So Resurrection Sunday morning begins a three-message Sunday morning uh, around the resurrection and, and something that Jesus said that's vitally important. Uh, and so the Sunday of, of Resurrection Sunday, the next Sunday on Friend Day, and then the last Sunday, or is it the second to last Sunday? The next Sunday after Friend Day, I think we have five Sundays in April, actually, which is odd. But, uh, uh, but anyway, that next Sunday will be the third in that message series around the resurrection. So with that in mind, Friend Day is April 16th. How many of you know somebody 
that just immediately comes to mind that you can invite to church for friend day? You know, anybody? I'm not asking if you have friends yet. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> okay? I'm, I'm, I am asking you, though, between now and then to make a friend. Okay? And that's still a lot of pressure for some of us. But if you know somebody to invite, let's have them here. Let's have a great big day like we did last year where we get to meet a lot of our friends and, of course, have lunch. It is time to kill the fatted chicken and uh, have some fried chicken and you'll bring the fixins and all the desserts and we'll just have a wonderful time of fellowship. Friend Day is coming on uh, April the 16th, okay? That'll be the Sunday morning of April 16th into the afternoon and we're going to have a great time. Friend Day is a fantastic time. We have some really cool cool um, testimonies of how Friend Day is kind of the day that that uh, people got introduced to our church that eventually got saved and uh, are serving and doing great things here at Broadway. So it's an important day. Let's make sure that we treat it that way and get our friends here with us. You just never know how God might just do some great things. All right, so let's take that challenge, April 16th for Friend Day. Let's pray, and let's get to our service this morning. Thank you, Lord, so much for the day. Thank you for the opportunity to be here in church this morning. We are uh, very privileged and honored to know that when we step into the sanctuary and there's two or three gathered together, that you promise to be right in the middle of us. You are right here. Your presence and your power, your Holy Spirit is, is uh, right here with us. And so I pray that we would be open to hearing from you. I pray the words of the songs that we sing begin to touch our hearts, that we'll pay attention to them as we sing them, that we'll lift you up in praise because you are certainly worthy of all of our praise. And then, Lord, then we will be very open to what your word has to tell us today. I thank you so much for what you will do in this next little while in advance. And we praise you so much again for your presence here with us. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand together. Here we go. Page 505. Words are on the screen. Love lifted me. One of our favorites. Let's lift it up together this morning. Sing with us. Love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within. Seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me. Now save am I. so old it may be new heavenly sunlight let's sing it out i love this song so much walking in sunlight all on my journey over the mountains through the deep air jesus has said i'll never forsake thee from this divine land never can fail See 
adores us with that heavenly sunlight. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you. sacrificial love that you showed us on the cross. Thank you so much for that great gift today. I pray as we give back to you that we would do so willingly and cheerfully today as your word instructs us. And uh, Lord, I pray you take the gift, bless it, bless the offering and bless the gift as well as the giver in Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. We continue to sing this great song, As the Deer Panteth for the Water. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul. Welcome Hannah back up here after a brief leave of absence. Don't know why, but uh, we have a be another beautiful grandbaby because of that. So uh, she's going to sing for us this morning. We're just going to back her up.
was a wreck. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owed. Broke my chains, freed my soul. For the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. Brought me from the darkness into glorious light. You took my place and laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting and life has no end for I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb thank you Jesus for the blood of God thank you Jesus it has washed me to glorious light. There is nothing stronger than the wonder-working power of the blood, the blood that calls the sons and daughters we are ransomed by our Father through the
Kiddos, you come on down. Brother Phil, time for children's time with Phil. All right, let me. Get my stuff here. Hang on, let me get it. All right. Huh. Make sure these don't fall over. I have been working all week. I have found a few new pets and I've been kind of working on them. They are, they are hippity and hoppity. Now, it's one thing trying to train a dog, but training rabbits is kind of like training cats. It is very difficult. And they have, we have taught them a trick to do, and they have, to, they get embarrassed, so they do have a little claw that they go into. It's just see-through. And so what they could do is they could hop and change spots. And so we're gonna go, they want to go ahead and perform that. So we got, we're going to put him over here. We're going to put him over here. And, all right, you're going to go and you're going to change spots. Go ahead and change. As they're changing, this should be, let me see. That's. White one, that one is the black one. I know you're thinking, wow, how did they sit there and do that? How did it take y'all that? How did it take them that long? And so now we're going to go, just in case you missed it the first time, we're going to make him do turn into the black and the white. Y'all ready? They're going to go and they're going to change. And, ta-da, now, again, I know some of you are like, well, how, where can I get some rabbits just like them that could do these amazing feats? Last time, you keep watching your kids, watch, are you watching? We are going to go and mix that one here, that one there, we're going to line them up, are you all ready? Hang on here. Did I, let me go ahead and turn them around. I didn't turn them around, did I? All right. Y'all ready? Did they change it? Ta-da. Now, you go and you think. Well, to feel, how did you ever do that? Because what's on this side over here is you, what, is what? The opposite, right? It's white here, so it should be what color on the opposite on the other side? Black. It should be black over here. What's going to be the opposite over here? White. But they're actually they're yellow and they're red. Um, so not quite what we were first thinking. Now, how many of you thought I know how he did that? Yeah, you thought I was just going and just turning them around. But, you know, the fact is, it kind of reminds us as Christians, we think we got life all figured out, don't we? A lot of times as Christians, we're not careful, and I get, I get guilty of this same thing. A lot of times, if you're not careful as Christians, we go and we think, you know what? I have life figured out. I don't need God as much. That's a very serious thing. Whenever you go, we think, you know what? I could go and get up in this morning. I could go and go to work or as kids, in y'all's case, y'all could go to school, and I never once go and start off the day by giving prayer to God, by spending time with God. So that's the one, one thing, the biggest mistakes is, as Christians do is we go and we try to go in our daily lives, and we forget to go and start our day off with Christ. We forget that because when we're not doing that, what are we trying to do? We are trying to go and go through the things of today, go to school, Without God's help, without God's power. Shit, don't y'all need help whenever you're going at school? Yeah. Going through tests, going through things at school, maybe the teacher, maybe with other, with other classmates. 
Do y'all need, need God's help? Yeah. Even as, as, as kids, guess what? When you're adults, your problems don't go away, do they? They just go and get, a lot of times they get bigger. A lot of times, we, we, as adults, we still go when we have problems. And if we're not careful, a lot of times we can make the mistake of, you know what, I can handle it on my own. But instead, we need to go and allow God to work through us throughout the day. What can I do? God, help me to be a witness. Help me to be a light to those I go to school with, those I go to, go to work with. And don't, don't forget, we don't have life figured out. We need God's help. All right? Let's go ahead and bow our head for prayer. We'll go ahead and pray and be dismissed over to Kids Quest. Dear Heavenly Father, again, Lord, just thank you so much for your love. Thank you, Lord, for the blood that because you shed your blood for us that we can have eternal life through you, that we can have the Holy Spirit come and dwell inside of us, dear Lord, and you can speak through, and you go and you, you could use us in a great and mighty way for you. We could be a light. And, Lord, I do pray, Lord, just be with us, each one here. Help us to go and to don't forget we need to go through each and every day with you, with your help, having you speaking through us, Lord, having you be able to go and, and just guide our path. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, to be with us as big church here, as brother pastor, as pastor, he goes and brings your word, be with us as we go next door to Kids Quest. Just pray, Lord, just as they have missions class, and we have our, our regular lesson time, the Lord, I pray, Lord, just to, to touch each one of our hearts and our lives. In Christ's name, amen. Got them all. All right, Psalm 37 is where we've been for the last couple of weeks. Let's go there again. Psalm 37, <clears throat> a chapter that gives us a saint's assurance. 40 verses, which 40 is the number of trial in the Bible. There was 40 years in the wilderness. 40 days Jesus was tempted, you know, so on and so forth. So 40 verses in this chapter should lead us to know that we're going to get some uh, help through our trials. And we know, as we started out a couple of weeks ago, verses 1 and 2 brings us the trial that bad people are getting all the good things and good people are getting all the bad things. What is up with that, right? Right? But what does the Bible tell us in verse 1 of Psalm 37? Fret not thyself because of evildoers, and don't even be envious against the workers of iniquity. Don't want what they've got, okay? And don't worry about all of this because ultimately God's taking care of business. He's got it. Okay, so verse Th uh, 2 tells us that they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Just as we will witness the winter grass wither away when the sun gets really hot here in a few weeks, so will the evil doers. So rather than fret, verse 3 tells us that we need to trust. Trust in the Lord. And remember... The Lord there is the important part, L-O-R-D, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The relationship portion of the Godhead in the Old Testament, Jehovah. So it's as if we are reading Jesus in the Old Testament. Okay? Trust in the Lord. Do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Last week, we saw delight thyself also in the midst of everything that's going on. You go ahead and just delight yourself in the Lord. Remember that word delight means to have a, a real happiness, but to the point where it really touches you down deep inside. Have that sort of delight. You kind of get the, 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 the sappiness of the love relationship, that, that real special, tender love that you've probably only shared with a few people in this lifetime, 
that you can share with whom? The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, excuse me, uh, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. We get to our focus verse today. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, thy judgment as the noon day. You know, there are terms and phrases that seep into our society's language. Things in the 70s that were cool were bad in the 90s. Things that were far out in the 60s were gnarly in the 80s. Y'all, y'all with me? All right, all right. Hang with me here for a second, all right? LOL meant or went from meaning lots of love to laugh out loud. The first few times I got LOL from some of our older church members back in the day, I don't think they got it. I think they were still using lots of love rather than laugh out loud because they would say something that and laugh out loud about that? Really? I mean, that's not something we would laugh out loud about necessarily. Um, then there are the classics that never seem to go out of style. Dude. Chicks. That's not so politically correct anymore. I understand that. Honestly, not going to lie. Seems to be phrases that just don't go out of style today you might also hear and and us of the older generation listen up so we can talk to the younger generation okay you might hear something like that smacks that smacks you know you don't even know what that means do you somebody that's younger tell me what that means it means what it's good that's right that smacks, it means it's good. <laughs> see, you're learning. You're lear you see, if you get nothing else out of today's message, we're bridging generational gaps here. You might hear the term sus. Sus. It means it's suspicious. That's right. That's sus. You, you figured that one out for yourself, surely. Uh, this was a new one for me. I uh, had to learn this from our youth pastor. No cap, which means that not, yeah, you're not kidding. No lies. No lies. Thanks, Lexi. I appreciate that. You're showing that you are with it. <laughs> hey, not to mention that there's phrases like spill the beans. Oh, that was a great one around our house when, when Andrew was little. Because, uh, because Andrew, I, I told Andrew what I was getting mom for Christmas one time. And you see, this kind of goes back generationally because my dad and my brother and I went to shop for my mom uh, like Christmas Eve. My dad, you know, waits till last minute to shop for Christmas and I come by that genetically. But anyway... Um, and, and so it's like Christmas Eve or the day before Christmas Eve, which is when we always opened our presents. And uh, he, we're shopping for mom, and, and we get mom this really cool ring. Do you all remember the rings that uh, a lot of ladies wore on this finger that would have their personal birthstone in the middle and then the birthstones of the husband and the kids around it? Well, that's the kind of ring that we bought my mom. It was beautiful. And uh, um, matter of fact, I'm sure my mom still has it today, but, but that's what my dad got my mom for Christmas that year. And of course, my brother and I being, being with dad when we bought it, and I'm a little older than my brother, so, so uh, I, I understood that this is a secret. My brother didn't understand that. 
And so when we got home, my mom immediately says, where y'all been? And, and my, my, dad, my dad goes, well, we've been out Christmas shopping. And, and so my mom goes, well, what'd you get me? And my little brother goes, it's a wing, mommy, it's a wing. Because <laughs> he had trouble saying it's ours back then. So when Andrew's little, also had trouble saying his ours for a while. But he would, we'd buy Christmas for, for mom, and, and uh, uh, mom would go, okay, Andrew, what'd you get me? And he'd go, uh-uh, mama, I'm not spilling the beans. And so he, fi- hey, he figured it out. Generationally, we got it, all, we got it right, finally. So uh, there's terms like spill the beans. Oh, by the way, another term for that is the skinny. That's a little older, okay? The skinny. Let me give you the skinny on something, you know, the the... The details, the deets, there's another one, the deets. Uh, or there's the tea, spill the tea, or, or, or right? And, and that's uh, giving you the scoop, which, by the way, there is scoop, which is information or the latest gossip. Now, you are educated. <laughs> Feel better? No? Now you're totally confused. Hey, I promise you of the older ilk, use that this week and people will think you're the biggest nerd ever. All right? That I promise. That'll be Now, listen, granted, many of us today, and I hope you're not one who thinks this, but sometimes in in the twenty twenties now, can you believe we can even say that? In the twenty twenties now, getting toward the middle part of the twenty twenties. We might think the Bible is a little bit of an old, stuffy book. I just beg to differ with you. In fact, we actually have a case in point today with Psalm 37, 5. The Bible again says, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. You see, the word in focus for us today is the first word of that verse, which is, like In the preceding verses, fret in verse 1, trust in verse 3, delight in verse 4. Now, the focus word is the first word, commit in verse 5. It actually means to roll on to or another great ism today to roll with. To roll with is what the word commit means. As we might say then... I'm rolling with my homies. I don't know if I'm the right color to say that, but, okay. I do think that all of that is pretty cool, rad, bad, righteous, gnarly, and far out, man, right? Peace out. We're not done quite yet, though. <laughs> so, by the way, it is okay to laugh in church. I, some, of you, some of you are going, what in the world is going on here? Some of you are here for the first time going, you're the coolest preacher I've ever been around. <laughs> <laughs> Baddest, most righteous, whatever. I always wonder what language Benny spoke, but this is the loudest he's ever been in church. So I'm finally, I, I, you know, after four years, we're finally locking in, I'm telling you. Now I'm getting it. That's good stuff. So when David, king of Israel, is talking about how our relationship with God should look, He is saying here that we need to roll with God. Isn't that cool? We need to roll with God. Literally, we need to roll all of our worries, fears, and tears onto the Lord. Remember, David is an aged saint now, writing to us, from a perspective that has seen the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, his relationship 
with the Lord work in many ways on many occasions. Actually, David's been witnessing this for a long time in his life. Because as a young boy, he was a shepherd, right? And as a shepherd boy, he took care of some wild animals with just his rod and his staff. And maybe the old trusty slingshot that he kept handy the day that he faced the giant, Goliath. As a teenager, he went up against a nine-foot-something giant named Goliath, and boy, did he ever see the Lord come through then. Amazing, from the enemies without, like the giant, to the enemies within. Remember, he's an aged saint, likely writing Psalm 37 after what happened with enemies within. His own son turned against him. And because of that, he had to abdicate the throne temporarily while Absalom took over. And then Absalom, uh, the way the Lord all worked it out between two counselors, Ahithophel and Hushai, the Lord uh, caused Absalom to accept the counsel of Hushai rather than Ahithophel. And as they pursued after David, they did so under Hushai's counsel, and ultimately David was able to get the throne back. But man, he had some enemies within as well as enemies without. And he says, you know what? No matter what, I'm going to roll with God. I'm going to roll with God. I'm going to commit my ways. So if David says, I'm going to commit my ways to God, then he then writes to us as a saint's assurance, commit your way too unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he's going to bring it to pass. What? That good fellowship, that good companionship, that we will know the richness of the Lord through fretting not, trusting, delighting ourselves in the Lord. So ultimately we commit our ways to him. So from one saint to another, He's giving us the assurance that we can trust in the Lord completely. So let's see for ourselves a couple of things then. First of all, we need to be rolling in the way. All right, since we're rolling with God, we need to be rolling in the way. Verse 5, uh, in the verse part of the verse says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. The way, by the way, is our road, our course, or our path. That's what the word way means there. So commit your road, the road that you're on, the course of your life, or the path that you are taking. It, when I think of those three illustrations, I think of the road is kind of, you know, maybe a little twisty, a little turny. Those are the most fun roads to uh, drive on. You know, unless you're sleepy. And then, uh, you know, that's kind of the way. When I think of my course, I think of much longer term. You know, this is going to be a, a long way to go. But when I think of my path, I'm thinking of something I'm walking. And I know that I can only walk so far. So any way that I'm going, whether it's long term or short term, I need to commit that way to the Lord. We must know that the best way is going to be the Lord's way. Now, we know that in church, right? We see that very clearly in church because we see it very clearly in the Bible. But tomorrow, are we going to still be doing the same thing? Or are we going to say, yeah, I think my way's better. I think I like the way I do things better. And could we potentially then end up in the same circumstance that we might have come into this place in today? Because we like to do our own thing way too often. We like our own way. You know, sometimes God has a way, or let's keep it, keep it right. The Lord has a way of getting us off the path we think we need to take onto another path. And it might be a little bit more uncomfortable. It might at first seem a little bit more bumpy, especially if we're not used to 
following the Lord down that way. But ultimately, I promise, when we have our way and the Lord's way matching, meshing, that way is going to end up much more smooth than our way ever would. So we need to commit to the Lord so we're rolling in His way. For us, when we become His children, we are either rolling in Him and with Him or we are rebelling against Him. Remember when Jesus called some of His first disciples? Remember when He called uh, Andrew who went and told Peter, his brother, about Jesus, and then ultimately James and John followed very closely because evidently their fishing companies were kind of side by side on the Sea of Galilee. And remember what the Bible tells us about when Andrew, Peter, James, and John heard about Jesus. Remember what it said? That they forsook all and followed Jesus. They left everything behind. The word forsake there actually means they probably sold their fishing business. They probably completely let it go. They were like, well, we're done fishing because Jesus said, you're not going to fish for fish anymore. You're going to fish for what? Men. And so they took that as being the truth. So what did they do? They said, we're rolling with Jesus. Right? They're committing their way to follow Jesus. Happened one other time, too, Matthew. Now, this shouldn't have been such a hard deal because Matthew was a tax collector, okay? Who wants to be a tax collector? Can I get an amen? All right, but that's what he was. And so he was at his tax desk, and it was probably getting close to April 15th. And um, he's like, this is just too much for me. Lots going on. And so Jesus comes to Matthew, and he says, follow me. And the Bible says immediately he left his tax desk and followed Jesus. And he followed Jesus with such commitment that he wanted everybody in his circle to follow Jesus too. So he had a big party that night and invited all of his friends who were his friends, tax collectors. Because we know that accountants only hang out with accountants. They're the only ones that can understand each other. They speak a different language. Got them all together and evidently Jesus spoke that language too because they had a great time that night. We don't know what the successes were because the Bible doesn't record that. We just know that Jesus went and had a meal with them at Matthew's house. That's pretty cool. But he left the tax desk and said, I'm rolling in the way with Jesus. You see, when Jesus called them, they immediately left all and followed his way. I think we need to learn from that. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Commit your road, commit your course, commit your path to the Lord. Because ultimately, we've got to trust in His Word. The second part of verse 5 says, Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. You know, if our Lord's Word to us isn't true, this instruction would become null and void. If his word was not true, we would go, huh, trust him and he'll bring it to pass? You see, if it's God's will, it's going to come to pass. How many times does the Bible say and it came to pass? Do you know why it came to pass? Because God wanted it to come to pass. So we need to trust in the word. It came to pass. If we do not Or if we know his word is true, then the longer and the more we trust that's put our confidence in it, the more our confidence is going to increase. This is where we need to be challenged to commit our ways, roll with the Lord. The challenge is to make our ways his ways, his ways our ways. That's the challenge. And that's when ultimately we can know, verse 4, the delight. That soft, fuzzy relationship with the Lord. Because our ways are His ways, His ways are our ways. That's how we know that we can ask whatever we want and it will be done for us. Why? Because it came to pass that way. Because it's God's will 
Thus, it's God's word. So that's what we need to trust in. That's what we need to put our confidence in. Okay, I don't want to lose you here, so let's rein us all back in. I don't have any more cool terms to use, or we'd try those about now. But when our relationship with the Lord is delightful, this is what occurs. Now, we find a lot of examples of these ways, trusting in His Word, in God's Word, actually. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 comes to mind immediately, right? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Literally, that means He'll make your paths straight. That's what that means. So Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, we must trust in the Lord, put our confidence in Him with all of our heart and not necessarily our own ways. I like uh, what Malachi chapter 3 challenges us with. Matthew, or Malachi rather, chapter 3 and verse 8. I just love this so much. The Bible says, will a man rob God? Yet ye, speaking of the nation of Israel at this time, who have sunk back into a backslid state once again, even though God had done amazing things through Ezra, Zerubbabel, and Nehemiah in giving them a country back, basically. He's saying, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have you robbed me? In tithes and offerings. I've been giving. And so... The Bible says, you're cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. So he gives us some instruction, okay? And he says, trust me in this, this is my word. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. By the way, the term Lord of hosts means the Lord of the armies. The Lord of the one who's in charge, basically. And so he says, Prove me, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Have you ever had so many blessings in your life that you just couldn't count them all? I mean, really. And the Bible is saying, look, if, if you'll just be faithful and give to me, I'm going to prove how much I love you because I'm just going to open up the windows of heaven and bless you in that. Um, have you ever just dared God to bless you? Probably not. But when you give willingly, obediently, obediently in our tithes, the tithes is the tenth part of our gross income. Even though your income may be gross, that's between you and God. Okay, uh, tenth, tenth of the gross income, any offerings that you give on top of that, that's what the offering is. So tenth of the, of the income and that's what, that's what the Bible's told us from the start, is, is the base point of the giving, all the way back into Genesis. And so if we'll just be faithful to give, God says, look at this, I'm going to open the windows of heaven up, and I'm just going to pour blessings out on you. And he says, do you know what the term prove me in this means? I double dog dare you. Well, maybe that doesn't mean exactly that in the, in the Hebrew, but that's, that's the Daniel version. I double dog dare you. Prove me in this. Now, we in West Texas know that if you get double dog dare, you got to do it. Right? Come on now, don't shell up on me. God's saying, look, I, I dare you. Prove me. Prove me in this. I love, I love uh, what verse 11 says. I will rebuke the devourer. For your sakes. You got somebody wanting to devour you? Absolutely. Who is it? The enemy. First Peter chapter 5 tells us that he's roaring about seeking whom he may devour. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you what? Cursed? No, blessed. Everybody's going to look on your life and go, why are you so blessed? Well, let me tell you, I'm just trusting in the Lord. I'm just trusting in what His Word says. I'm just doing what it says. That's all I'm doing. And God's taking care of the rest. Why? Because I'm rolling with God. 
I'm rolling with the Lord. I want to do what he says. I'm tired of my own ways. I'm tired of the crooked paths. I want to trust him more. Man, we need some of this. All nations shall call you blessed. Ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Now let's translate that a little bit. He's obviously talking about Israel. But don't you want to be a blessed church? Don't you want to be a blessing to the community that we have the privilege to serve in? Don't you want the things that you do, handle, touch, taste, feel, all those things to be blessed? Where we live today and whatever we are involved with, whatever your trade may be, yes, surely you do. You're lying if you're telling me no. We do want that. The Bible's telling us how to get it. We've got to trust his word. Psalm 51.10 gives us another example of how our relationship can become delightful. Psalm 51.10, we read a little bit of this last week. Psalm 51.10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Couple that with 1 John 1.9, which says, If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, the examples of trust, of giving, of then asking the Lord to renew our fellowship with Him should lead us to a place where we can trust God's Word so that when we are rolling with Him, we see His blessings and benefits on us. When we are rolling with Him by placing our complete confidence in His Word, our paths become straight, right, pleasant, prosperous, blessed. Blessing is poured out on us, and we are able to breathe clean air through the renewed fellowship restoration brings to our lives. The end of verse 5 in Psalm 37, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. And verse 6, he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Righteousness, because we are right with the Lord. Judgment through our just and holy Lord in whom we are rolling with or committed to. Man. You remember with me from just a moment ago. That Peter was one of the ones Jesus told to follow me, to roll with me, and I'll make you fishers of men, right? Remember that? Okay. What did he do? The Bible says he dropped his nets, he forsook all, sold everything, and followed Jesus. Well, that was going along pretty great until about the time Jesus was crucified. And Peter got a little bit twisted up in thinking, or in his thinking. You see, because Peter wanted Jesus to go ahead and take the throne of Jerusalem at that point. And that's why Peter was so upset on the night that Jesus died and grabbed somebody's sword and cut off a dude's ear. All right, because he wanted Jesus to take charge at that moment. He, again, was a little twisted in his mind, okay? So later on, after he tried to cut somebody's head off and just got the ear... Okay, you're not going to shoot for somebody's ear. He's trying to cut his head off, but because he's a fisherman, not expert swordsman, he just got the ear and not the head. And so later that night, he's even more discouraged. And he follows Jesus all the way to the place where he's getting tried, and rather than stand with Jesus, he did what? He denied him. And how many times did he deny him? Three times. I would say that Peter all of a sudden has a commitment problem, wouldn't you? He's not rolling with Jesus much anymore. He hadn't been listening to the fact that Jesus over and over and over again leading up to the cross has been telling him, look, guys, we're going to Jerusalem. And guess what? Things aren't going to go good. They're going to betray me. I'm going to be crucified. But on the third day, I'm going to rise again. Peter just somehow then went right over his head. 
He just missed it or wouldn't listen to it. He wasn't trusting in the Lord. He wasn't committing his way. He wasn't rolling with the Lord because of these things. By the way, when Jesus spoke those things, he being the word, he should have been listening. Because of this, his commitment level to the Lord fell off. And what did he decide to do? John 21 says, he went and bought some more fishing gear. What did he tell the guys? I'm going fishing. And all of a sudden, he took some people with him. You see, when your and my commitment level wanes, we take others with us. And they're out in the boat, and they're fishing all night long, man. It's a hard night. Probably where the Beatles got their song, A Hard Day's Night, man. It was a tough one. Didn't catch anything. Nothing. I mean, even if they were fishing like I fish for bass, that'd be a hard night on the, on the arm. But they're casting nets in the sea and dragging them back in and casting nets and dragging them back in. They're exhausted. Daybreak hits. And what happens? Jesus shows up. And he hollers out at him, hey guys, how you guys doing tonight? How's your fishing trip going? One of the guys with Peter says, hey, man, whoever you are up there, we hadn't caught anything. We are exhausted. We're tired. And so the guy on the shore goes, uh, why don't you cast your net on the other side of the boat? So they cast their net on the other side of the boat, and guess what? They brought up 153 fish in one catch. The Bible tells us that. 153 fish in one catch. And as they were dragging these fish in the boat, here's what I think happened. John was the youngest, so he was all obviously hadn't got the, the uh, discernment of when to speak and when not to speak down yet. Most teenagers kind of get an amen to that. He said, uh, hey, uh, Peter, we've been here before. We've seen this before. This has happened one other time to us, remember? And uh, John goes, uh, Peter, I think that's probably Jesus up there on the shore. Peter knows that his commitment level to the Lord, he hadn't been rolling with the Lord real closely because all of a sudden he's now in debt because he's had to go buy new fishing rigs. Not committed to the Lord anymore for a few days anyway. And now he's got a dilemma. What's going to happen? Things got so tough at that particular moment that Peter just said, man, he said, I'm just, I'm jumping out of the boat. Pulls his, he'd been, he'd, I mean, it, fishing was so hard that night that he had basically stripped down to almost nothing. He pulled his coat back on him and he just flung himself in the water. Swam to shore. Who'd you meet there? Jesus. You're right. It was Jesus on the shore. Jesus already had caught some fish because he had them broiling on the fire. So Jesus feeds him some fish, and lo and behold, what does he start talking to Peter about? Commitment. Who are you going to roll with, Peter? Do you love me? Well, Jesus, you know I love you. That's not what I'm talking about, Peter. I'm talking about the real kind of love here. You're talking about the kind of love like you love that you're eating fish right now for breakfast. Do you love me? Peter goes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus goes, that's not what I'm talking about. Do you love me? Three times. Peter denied him three times. He wasn't rolling with him for a while. Peter was restored three times by the Lord Jesus. And Peter said, you know what? I think I better roll with Jesus from now on. You turn a couple more pages in the Bible, and Peter is preaching his head off, and 3,000 people get saved. Because all of a sudden, he's rolling with Jesus now, all over again. 
Peter ultimately decided, it's going to be better if I roll with Jesus. How about you? How about you? You say, how do I roll with Jesus? First of all, you've got to have a relationship with him. The Bible tells us that we have relationship with God through Jesus. And then unless we have confessed our sins, confessed that we're sinners and repented of those sins and asked Jesus to come into our hearts and save us, we don't have a relationship with God. In fact, the Bible tells us we're still an enemy of God. So we need to have a relationship with Jesus. How else do we roll with Jesus? You've been saved but not baptized? Guess what? The first act of obedience once you get saved is baptism. You need to be baptized. About your church membership. The church is the body of Christ. Who's the body? We are. We talked about that back in January. Excuse me, February. We're the body of Christ. What about re rededication or renewal? Recommitment, as it were, saying like Peter, Jesus, I'm sorry. I had a, had a bad moment. I need to recommit my life to you. One other thought. What about this? What about recommitment if the Lord has called you to do something and you said no? You know, here's what I think about that. Your relationship with the Lord is not going to be what it should be till you say yes to whatever that was that you said yes to once but turned away from later. So how about it? We're going to roll with the Lord today? I hope so. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Let's stand together this morning. Lord, please take this time. Holy Spirit, please speak to us. Draw us, lead us, remind us, work in us. Challenge our commitment to you today in these few moments of invitation. May we be obedient to how you lead us if it's for salvation to come and be a baptism candidate or recommit our lives to you. Remember a yes that became a no and make it a yes again. Whatever you are dealing with us with, please help us to put feet to your Spirit's promptings today. As you test our commitment level right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing this verse of invitation. I'd rather have Jesus. You come today as the Lord leads and is speaking to your heart. You come now. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches untold. I'd rather Jesus, than houses or lands, I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be world affords today. I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name than to be the king.
He's sweeter than honey from out of the comb. He is all that my hungering spirit needs. I'd rather have Jesus and let him lead than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in fear's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. We're going to sing that chorus one more time as our conclusion today. Be back tonight at 6 for our uh, week 5 of Bible study. Then to be the king of a vast domain. Did I say 6 tonight? I did, didn't I? Right? Okay, good. Good. I was a little distracted there for a second. Here we go. Then to be the king of a